Oh no! And we are going live. Um, set the iPad up. Mushroom around this morning. Um, so, quick good morning, Mark, John, Duncan, Elena, Peter, Bob. Evening, Bob. Uh, Simon. Morning. Morning, 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 Julian. I'm flicking down names here. Morning, Trevor. Morning, Andy. Morning, Miss T. Morning, James. Morning, Clive. Ian, good morning. Colin, good morning. Mark, good morning. Ah, good morning, Mr. Wall. I thought I'd do something to make you feel at home. Uh, yeah, good morning. Morning, Tony. Morning, Andy. Morning, Hans. Morning, Steve. Morning, Jennifer. Morning, Leroy. Morning, Nigel. Ah, Lady H. Morning. Morning Colin, morning Steve, morning Just Pace. Right, I think that's caught up with everybody. Morning, morning, morning Bradley, Ridley. Uh, yeah, I'm on top of the world this morning. I've got my family of sheep in with me. These are for Mike Wall. He wanted me to make him feel at home. So, that'll help him. He was taking the mick out of me last night. If anybody watched his live stream last night, he abused me. I'm just trying to uh, get this iPad to work for Karen. Yeah. 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 There. Yeah. Yeah. That's got a right. We got dust extraction on, we've got this on, we've got that on, we've got everything on this morning. So, last week we had a little bit of a disaster, um, and uh, IRD, I've got pro edges in stock, don't you worry about that. I've got loads, immediate delivery. Morning Derek. So, no Derek, I didn't deserve it. I was unfairly abused. Um, so, we had a little problem last week uh, and part of the problem was the Cora uh, and Pat Carroll pointed it out quite quickly and I was in denial but someone else pointed it out and they were quite right. What happened is I was using uh, the McNaughton Cora and I hadn't tightened the stem in the banjo, so the whole thing moved and then we got big white cut and uh, it's history as they say, but we've still got on our lathe our bit of African blackwood for the base of our tagine, tagine. So we've got a choice this morning, we're going to do a top, we're going to just finish off the inside of this base, uh, sand it up so it looks nice and shiny and then we're going to do a top and um, we could go with a bit of uh, Roblinga another exotic wood um, that's horrible and dusty and all the rest of it we could go with this bit of sporting elm as a contrasting top that makes sense contrasting top to the dark wood that'll be something And uh, is the shop open next week? Uh, online or click and collect? The shop shop is not open open, as in walking customers. Um, or we could go with this chunk of sycamore, um, but that looked a bit boring, wouldn't it? So that would have to be coloured. So, we'll have a think about that. I'll drop them to the side. 
Like that, click, clock. Sported Elm, you would. Sported Elm, rotten as a peach, that is. Sorry, just had to go an airline off me dust mask. Lost me safety specs because I dust mask up just for this first bit. Clean me safety specs off, they're a bit dusty. Clean. That's the way to do it, don't mess about. Yeah, no problem. Right, safety specs on. Dust mask. Oh. And away we go. Back to the owner. There's another sheet. So we bring the old tool rest down. We bring the old tool rest down. This dust mask is a pain in the arse, isn't it? Get our sheep out of the way. I need dust mask. Uh, need tool rest. Bring the tool rest in. And what we're going to do is just a light cut on the inside of this bowl because the finish on the inside isn't great. And then we're going to put a little recess for our lid. So we're going to come back here. I've checked it's in there nice and secure. I'm out of the way. Turn the speed down. Turn the lathe on. Turn the speed up. And we're going to get a bit of speed into it for fine cut. So we're going to spin it around about 1200 RPM. Safety specs on. And this is just going to be a real fine cut. Let's come over to that camera there. I'm just going to pick this cut up here on the inside. No pressure on the tool. up on the middle there there's a freshly sharpened tool and now we've got a much better finish bit of speed nice so we we'll just sort this rib what will be the rim out now with another fine cut along there just in here, real light stuff. Red stop, greens go. That's it, that's better. Right, so that's what it needed, a fresh start. Uh, you can hear the extractor running, obviously, um, because this is nasty stuff. I know a lot of people like turning it. Not my favourite. We can bring our little picture of the sheep back, make Mike fill at home. 
So we're just going to give this a quick sand. Get me dust mask back over my mouth completely. Talk amongst yourselves for a second. Right, I'm not sure, I'm no expert. Um, Karen's been saying, what is it? I've got uh, the chairman of our club sent over some details and it ties up with African Blackwood and someone else at the club turns a lot of wenge and said he thinks it's wenge. I don't know. Uh, and to be quite honest, I don't really care because I'm not going to turn it again, that's for certain. Nasty, horrible. I can taste the dust. I'm trying to find my tack cloth that I safely put uh, in, in a jar. We're just going to wipe the dust off. It is an exotic wood of some description. Dark brown in colour with an open grain pattern. That's nasty. Proper nasty. I've just got to make sure that we're clean now right so we're clean we're good we get rid of that contaminated me tack cloth now lost me sheep look it's gone sheep's gone check that over there so I want to just put a little recess in here now to take the lid so with me little skew if I can find it here. Oh, that's a feeding tool. That won't do it. That won't cut the mustard. I've lost me skew down below. All I'm doing is digging up feeding tools. We'll use this 
big as, ah, there it is, hidden down there. I should write on the handles really, all the handles look the same and then I'd know where I'm at. So I'm just going to come in here and cut a little shoulder as a recess for the lid of our pot. And just want it about there. Yes, the light cut. Make sure she's flat. I've got to make that a little bit deeper. deeper again would have learnt that red is stop and green is go, wouldn't you? But I don't. I push the wrong button every time. Yeah, it's got a little shoulder. I need my glasses on, really. And I put my glasses, my reading glasses, down somewhere safe. Oh, there they are. Yeah, I just got a little line there that won't be good. Let's clear that off. You can see I'm right in the way, I should imagine. Hold on, let's move the uh, mouse over here a bit. Right, now uh, you can see a bit, that's good. So I'm just making sure that's nice and square. And I've got a clean line, so that's that bit. We'll go to stop. And now we're going to use a bit of cut and polish on here. I'm, ah. I'm looking for everything this morning. I'll put everything in easy reach and I can't find anything. Shouldn't do that really, should I? So. Grab a bit of this into here. What a beautiful morning, eh? Cold, crisp, sun's out. good to be alive sort of day. Bit in the inside there. And then on the shoulder there.
the one good thing about this, this piece of wood polished up is going to look quite nice. So, for all the pain, I'm sure this will look quite smart. Take the excess off of there. Drop that on the floor. Cleaned my workshop up last week. As soon as I finish, horrible stuff. Get rid of it. Not as clean as Lady H's. That's like a palace. Seen the pictures. Like a palace. This is a workshop. A wood turner's workshop. Full of crap. So now we're just working this cut and polish into here. Mining my fingers on the chuck because that hurts. Don't stab your fingers into the chuck when it's spinning. Don't stab your fingers into metal when it's not spinning. That hurts as well. No, with cut and polish you don't need sanding seed. You can go straight on with it. That's that bit. Get this bit in here. In the inside. And it already starts to shine. go lovely as they say lovely jubbly let's have a look at that now look that looks all right inside looks all right it looks all right nice now we'll just put a bit of wax over the top of that That's the chestnut cut and polish. Uh, I started using it a few weeks ago. The Yorkshire grit run out and everything that I sell I use and I did not use cut and polish. So I thought, well, let me try that instead of opening another pot of Yorkshire grit. Um, and I quite like it. Quite like Yorkshire grit as well, to be fair. Um, they're good, both of them are good for an instant finish. The trouble is when you're finishing some, especially in demo land, it's got to be done fairly instantly. Uh, and when you first start turning, everything you turn might take you ages to turn, but you want it nice and shiny in no time at all. So we, uh, rush the finish a little bit so this is uh, cut and polish or Yorkshire grit is an instant finish and it gives you a nice shiny bowl or shiny piece of work get the wax in there right um, but finishing you know if you're using oils and stuff You've got to let it dry properly and then buff it and let it dry some more, then buff it. Um, if I'm using Danish oil, I'll apply it over a week. So I'll give it a coat of oil. First coat goes into the wood, I'll give it a second coat. If that goes in, I'll give it a third coat. And once I see a bit of residue sitting on the surface, I leave it for a minute, wipe it off. And then put the piece to the side till the next day and then i'll buff it then i'll give it another coat of oil summer sink in and then i'll wipe off the excess and leave it till the next day and then buff it and do that as a process over the course of the week um, and then you get a real nice finish but it takes a bit of time you know it's not a race so that's why i run so many chucks if i'm doing things properly 
then I'll have the pieces left in the chuck and I'll just put the chuck back on the lathe for a few minutes and away we go. Now with this micro crystalline wax you are supposed to leave it for a while before you start buffing it. So we're not going to get the perfect effects of it but it will be good enough for what we're doing here a bit of bonfire wood now the secret with putting wax on is don't put on too much at once you're far better off thin coat let it dry a bit then buff that and then put a second thin coat on let it dry a bit and then buff that. If you put too much on at once, it takes an age to get it off. And you get lines in your wax and all sorts. So all I'm doing here is pushing to get some heat into the wax. Make sure I've got no little lines spinning around as you watch the cloth come across the surface. used there a bit of uh, kitchen roll that I apply paint with um, I should you know that will tear away I use a safety cloth that's quite nice uh, but this was just a case of get this polished up so we got the effect of the piece <coughs> <coughs> a bit of dust hanging around so take this out of the chuck now we'll sort the bottom out in a minute so there's our little finished back to that one part one little finished bowl got a nice shine to it there so not perfect by any stretch of your imagination so sported elm you fancied come over this way sport it out it's got sport lines in it load of crack here I mean it's proper light so uh, and what we're going to do is make a top to come on it something like that so we'll have the contrast of the wood now my worst bit of rot is where these splits are just here so this we'll turn that away so this will be our base so what I've got to do is find the center of that piece of wood put our oval bit of exotic over there find the old center finder overhead center finder let's find rough center of this piece of wood it's something like an 8 inch blank we're going to be somewhere around there. Let's put a centre mark in there. That's the bit I want to turn away. So, not use colour. Oh. Right, I'm just going to bore a hole in this piece of wood, no I'm not. <coughs> I want to uh, be free. Let me just do it this way. I looked at the pillar drill. I'm not getting anywhere near that. We're just going to use a screw chuck. 
to man it. I was. Tied up. I was messing around with the cameras the other day. I forgot to cable tie that bit of cable up out of the way. Another little job. Got loads of little jobs. Has everybody got a lot of little jobs? Just got to do this, just got to do that. Just make sure that's on the flats in there. I think that's got it. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, we'll just fit in with a screw chuck into here. Are the cameras frozen? Cameras are frozen. Hold on. Why is that frozen? <coughs> uh, feed's all good at this end. The camera's frozen. Yeah, hold on. <coughs> I'll be back. Hold on just a second, let me just... Uh, and we'll come back here. No, the camera's frozen out. We had this problem last week. Uh, so what I'm going to do is bear with us. overhead and have we got anything ah right now we're coming back right we're just gonna go overhead and side we froze out last week uh, it's not broadband check that and I put it down to um, the machine processing so much data although it's quite a powerful computer so I've upgraded the RAM in it so it can process even more even faster and it's still frozen out and I've got a feeling now it's OBS so I might have to have a play with different streaming software I think right so I'll just lock this Headstock off there, make sure she's on there nice and tight. There, got a focus. Focus, what the cameras are on the wood turning. So, I'm bringing the tool rest up, pinch it up, turn it by hand. That's close enough. All the sheep are after the ram. Well done. Boom, boom. I'm going to bring the tail stock up. Mine says both. Eh? Mine says both. Boom. There's a camera out. Hold on. Let me. Sorry, this is a. Uh, when Joe's here, he does this stuff. That looks alright. Focus. Okay, okay, that's that one. Side. No, no, we haven't got 
side, side, hold on, so we can take the side so we can get that one back, deactivate, activate, okay, no it don't seem to want to do that, we're just going to have to live with an OV, that's the best I can do with it, um, you've gone black, you'll come back to overhead in just a minute, there we are, back to overhead, I'll have to have another play with this, so, safety specs on, stand out of the way, turn the speed down, turn the lathe on, turn the speed up, not going to go too mad, a bit vibrated there, so we're about 500 RPM, we're out of round at the moment, and I'm just getting the tool into my side, little cut along and we'll just bring her into round. You guys are really kind to me, this is an awful bit of wood. Way. Why is he cutting back the other way, you say? Because that side of the gouge is still sharp. little piece of wood. So bring this up, make sure we're good and we'll go to a fresh gouge, put a little bit more speed in it, we're nearly there, I've got a high point at the end here. Now I can pick the cut up wherever I like, if I use the bevel, I just slide the bevel on the back of the wood, nothing happens lean the handle towards the lathe a little bit, pick up the cut, want to lessen the cut I just bring the handle back towards me, want to cut more I bring the handle more towards the lathe. Simple. So, we've got our sporty bit of elm here, and we'll just come through, flatten off the base, and get ourselves a chucking point. Spin that by hand, turn it on, and we're just going to cut in. Rest a bit. I have my arms up near me, elbows up near me, shoulder as I'm li lifting the handle so far up. The tool rest was a tad high. Let's just drop that a fraction, move that into there, like so. And now I can just get in there, get rid of that bit. Fit in me chuck and now make myself a chucking point.
come on the side there, pull this back. Clear that out of the way. I'm just making sure the wood's solid enough to take a chucking point. It's a bit soft. We'll give it a go. I'm not solely convinced at the moment. The wood's quite soft here on the thumbnail, uh, and I've got to crimp down onto that, clamp down onto it. So I need to know that it's not going to just part and we have another flying wood situation. do is we'll go a little bit deeper and deeper with this uh, recesses are, are good um, and the, this is not going it's going to just be the top of a, a bowl Top of this piece um, and the reason I'm not using the recess because the wood's rotten and it's got splits and cracks in it if I put a recess in and force the jaws out if those cracks go in a long way I could open up the crack and bang it could just pop so I'm opting for a spigot tenon whatever you want to call it uh, to cramp down on that but I think we're solid enough. I'm just just now. I was putting my thumb into it, and it was a bit soft. But I think we're all right there. Um, so I think we're all right. That's rotten there. Uh, I'm thinking on my feet here because I was going to add this as the top with the contrast but I think this bit's got to go with the flute so I'm going to have to reverse it and reverse it again I think right so we get a chucking point on here so we can get some shape we're going to turn this bit away I'm changing my mind as we go because of the nature of the wood so let's get our let's see what happens we'll get our vernier on here cut a spigot into here and I'll cut a slightly deeper spigot and I would do for a piece of wood this size so I know that I've got a good grip so I want around about 10, 11 mil is what I've got there. So I'll just come in first of all and get a spigot into here. Raise the tool rest a little bit and use me uh, skew as a scraper again. Negative brake scraper. Just come into it and get it down to that line. that up and let's have a look what we're dealing with now we'll 
find out in just a second. Let's turn this around. I'll leave the screw chuck in because if it's not right, I can just pop that back in. Saves a lot of messing around. Let's see if we tighten that up there. Don't over tighten it. And I'm just giving this a bit of stick here. I think that's going to go. Yeah. It was that soft. As I wobbled it, I thought that's going to go. And I only give it a little tap. And away she went. And it just snapped off. Because this has gone too far in here. So. So, so, so. Always check your wood. If we put any speed on that, that would have been a flying piece of wood. And I know you all think it's quite good fun, but that is, you don't want it. So, that's that plan out the window. Plan B. Plan B. I left my screw chuck in if I wind it on and off um, then I can land up with the thread being loose so doing it this way the thread's nice and tight we should have mounted back where we were and I'm just thinking here the best way around this that spigot weren't good I want this to be my bowl. I want this to be my bowl. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. Not a lot. Okay, what I need now is I'm going to take the measurement, we're going to use this as our mountain. So I'm going to take my measurement across here. my fern here is just not big enough so it's a little bit over this Little bit over that. Okay. So what we're going to do now? Raise tool rest up. <coughs> Come in with me little skew. a bit of this down now 
Now I know that my uh, vernier didn't open up as wide as this. So now I leave it short and I know I'm not near it at the moment. So now I can just come in and take a little bit more and a little bit more and just keep testing it. Red, 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 stop, 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 stop. Green, 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 go, 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 go. It's just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Let's find the old uh, glasses here. Get a ruler. And get a rough size off of that. I'm just about 160. And on here, I'm just about 160 ish, 162, 163. So a little bit more. Now I'm looking over the opposite side here. I'm looking over here to my scribe line. And I'm just going to put a little chamfer on the corner to help it pick up. And we try that. See if we're near. No, a little bit more. We're close now, we're very close. We're just sort of making a box. So we try this. This is where you need Michael Stratton, he likes making a box. No, a bit more. Now you're far better off taking little bits and checking, taking little bits and checking, rather than just going. exciting stuff isn't it nearly a little bit more one more cut last cut and all that and we do that Little bit more, one more cut. Here we go, slightly bigger, bigger skew. There was a technical reason why I used the bigger skew there. Because I couldn't see the other one. That's nearly there. I want this to be a real tight fit. Now I'll go back to the small one because I can see it. A little bit more. We've got to be ultra fine. Just a tad out.
That might have been too much. Oh, look. Just a tad too much. It's gripping, but not as much as I want. But now I've got a line, I can go in because this needs to be... I've got my glasses on for this so I can see. This needs to be about two mil, two and a half mil deep. About double that. So let's get rid of a bit of that. than I want so I can just take a skim off the front you what? A Longworth chuck because it's for finishing it's not really for turning and we're gonna put a bit on here thanks Paul thanks very much very kind of you right we're just a tad out there and that's moving on the screw chuck now I want to get that out of there without damaging the wood What's happening now is me wood's moving on me screw chuck. Yeah, should be all right. Nah, there's movement in me screw chuck now. Got it. Let's make sure that's done right up. Can't afford for any real movement here because that will throw it right out. I think we've yeah, just got to take a tad, a real tad off of this. So what I'm going to do is just get a bit of sandpaper on it just to ease that side. Try that. Yeah. Me burn here, a bit of messing around with measuring here. So now I've got me burn here for me depth. I want to check me depth against that. And just a max and a half too deep on that so let's just take a max and a half off of that and get rid of that middle bit Lovely, that's what we're after. <coughs> bit of finicking around here because it's going to be a bit of a 
Ouch. Feed that into there, stop that there. Get that square on there. There we go. Right, that's sitting nicely now, nice and fixed. And that's what we were after. That's what we were after. Okay, so now I've got to get that apart. Can't get in there. That's it. Right, that's out of there. Let's put that to one side. Now, what we're going to do is make this the lid and turn that as our funnel. So, what I want to do is put a hollow in here dome top so we'll just hollow out a bit of this middle and we'll do a bit of shaping on the outside while it's in the screw chuck so we do less when it's on my new temporary fix just real light cuts here we're just on a screw chuck To the middle we go. There's one for my wall. Another sheet. Sheep everywhere today. Unbelievable. Sorry, we've got no side cameras, I don't think. They packed up. Um, I could try. Just getting rid of that. Let's try it. See if that side one wants to work. No, that's just overhead. No, we've got no sides. Gone. Just a shallow dome on the inside. Proud Tajin. Red, 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 red. Got a lovely pattern and colour in here, but nasty bit of wood. Okay. So now we want to get a bit of a flute going on. And we need to get our diameter down to the outside of our top. So if I put that back on there, give that a tap, bring our centre up and lock that off. That should be fairly secure 
and now we can start taking down some of this bit so let's turn it on she's spinning all right and all I'm doing is picking up the back of the bevel leaning the handle away from the lathe and as I pick my cut up I stopped talking there because it's thrown straight into my face. I twist my body back into the lathe. Get rid of me close-up glasses, put me safety specs back on, do me smock net up. I'm getting covered in clobber here. Um, I've got to bring the sides of this down a bit. Just run this along, reduce the diameter of the piece of wood. Got about five mil to go. Milk will go. Let's get rid of some of this. Now I can't hack away at it as quick as I would like to because I am just sort of I'm on a screw shut. And between the uh, centres.
what I'm trying to do is reduce this down as much as possible because this is the most secure holding that I'm going to have realistically at the moment then I'll bring the chuck round put <laughs> mouthful of shaving I'll turn it around pick this up in the chuck bring the tail stock up and carry on turning this down so I'm doing as much as I can while I'm in this situation here I'll start bringing the top in so I'm twisting away from the lathe now I twist back into the lathe I'm putting force on the cut I'll be trying to part it the other way round so this is why I'm opting for this way round there is a little method to my madness not a lot so I'm just going to come in now that tool's getting a little bit near the mark so let's just come over to another tool this much narrower here so what I'm going to do is just start getting a be really careful as I come back down God, I'm heading towards my chuck I'm tearing my grain out all over the place with this so I am now nearly in the point where I'm gonna to have to reverse it around I'm just gonna bring this one more shape and cut into here I'm just rolling my wrist over here anti-clockwise now I'm rolling my wrist clockwise and twisting the body back into the lathe to make this curve flow I fell off the end of my tool rest there there so we're getting our shape now to our little box so there's the dangerous stuff. Da da da. Oliver does it again. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is release that. Release my screw chuck. Like a big what? Michael Stratton. How wrong are you? See how easy that wound off that screw chuck. I think you lot have just got it in for me. Let's see if Oliver can do it wrong again. But well, I won't be beaten. We'll fight them on the beaches. Okay, so now what we're going to do is put this into the chuck. 
trouble is we took it out of the chuck, now we're putting it back into the chuck and it might fry it out a little bit. We're then going to bring our tailstock up into there and lock that off. And give that wind in. Like that. Not too hard, just enough. Then we're going to get way out of the way and get Karen to turn the lathe on. What do you reckon? <laughs> And then we just turn this up slowly, 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 catchy monkey. Oh, look at that, a thing of beauty. Slightly, just, if I was being ultra critical, I mean, that is just half a mil out or something, quarter of a mil out, but I'm not going to be ultra critical because this is going on a bonfire. Only joking. So, now I'm going to come in and reduce this some more and just be careful I want to make this curve here now blend in round and up but I want to take a bit more out of there I want this down to uh, I don't know inch and a half two inches something like that so I should just come back in turn the lever turn the speed up a little bit because I'm stupid Pick the cut up. Just let the tool do the cutting. Now we just bring this around here. As I go there, I was just rotating the bowl gouge around anti-clockwise while twisting the body away from the lathe. There. Great, great, great. Okay. Now we're getting down to the size we want. We want to blend this curve over and it's all flowing quite nicely. So what I'm going to do now, quickly, just resharpen the tool. Because this wood is very fragile, we want sharp, sharp tools. Because we're cutting at a slow speed because of the way we're wedged together. Um, so we want to make sure our tools are sharp as possible to get nice cuts. While I'm here I'll do two so I can just swap tools. a ninja warrior Johnny two gouge right so there we go now we want to blend this in so it flows and it looks as one is the plan uh, technically I'm turning all the wrong way Roll the gouge over, twisting as I get to there, 
Roll the gas back the other way. Twist away. Lost the cut. Because our curve was slightly out. We've got a few mil to play with. I'll just adjust the tool rest there. I've got to have a trade off between where my tool rest is. I've got a couple of mil to play with here, so same again. Yeah, let's pick the back of the bevel up. In. Twist into the lathe. Twist into the lathe. That here, start twisting away from the lathe. Roll the gas, just slowly anti clockwise. Probably lose the car any second. I might be able to keep it on. There. We just lost the cut again because of our shape is playing round here. But we're getting rid of our torn grain. So I'll come in here. Another little cut. Hey, Mike, you're going. Hold on. Goodbye, Mike. Good to see ya. Back in, twisting into the lathe, into the lathe, into the lathe. In, lift the handle, rotate the wrist a little bit. Twisting away from the lane. We've got a final cut here, just maybe two, uh, to balance this up so it flows round as our lid. So I'm just going to move my tool rest round here a little bit. Turn the lathe on. Can't afford to catch. And you ain't doing does that my smock sleeve, although it's done up, just decided to catch on the end of the tool rest. Let's have a look at that. Being finicky, I, I don't know, a quarter of a mil out on the lid, but uh, we're going to live with that. I'm just going to come back here. I've just finished, I've got a bump just here, so I just want to get rid of that. Because I'm stupid. There, just.
bits better. Alright, so that's pretty good. Now, this is supposed to be a chimney, so it's got a hole drilled in it. So what are we going to do now then? Well, we're going to quickly, quickly, put some tape around there, get some masking tape. Quickly, he says, quickly, faster, faster. Where's the masking tape? Where's it gone? Tape. Everybody's still awake? Everybody enjoying their cells? I'll get rid of the sheep now, Mike's gone. Let's go back overhead. There we go. Now this masking tape snackers. masking tape. The old roll probably been in the workshop too long. Didn't want to come apart. Oh this is quality of masking tape these days is rubbish. Right so what I want to do is take this up Gaffer tape would have been the better thing to use. But this will give it a bit of grip. Hold that in there. We're not going to go too mad here. That in there. Now, need me drill chuck. We're going to meet live centre. There. Find the drill chuck. Ah. There's my drill chuck right under my nose. Drill chuck. Now I want a smaller falsen a bit than that. So let's get a small falsen a bit. I've managed to put everything where I can't find it. Nothing unusual. And I've got a box of falsener bits that have gone missing. This is like a cam lock, this thing. It just last week and I've put them somewhere safe so bear with I found them the panic now I just want a small falsen a bit 
to go in there, something that size, that'll do us. Now because I don't want any vibration actually, I'm going to go false the first, and then maybe chuck the key, chuck the key, chuck the key. Um, then maybe put the extension in afterwards. I don't want to take any real chances here, so let's do that. Well, take a chance on me, a bit like Abba song, isn't it? Okay, so we do this. Lock that into there. Put that somewhere safe so I can't find it in a minute. Bring the full snow up. Wind that back. That there. Bring that up. Now what I'm hoping, we'll turn the lathe on. Turn the speed down. About 500. Now I'm just going to slowly wind this in. I'm hoping the wood's soft enough that I can wind in gently without dislodging it. You can see this going horribly wrong, can't you? Just slowly and gently. Real slow and gentle. Easy, easy. You can tell the way uh, the wood's coming off the cutter here, it's just like a dust. The fibres, it's not um, shavings that you would normally get. I did say it was sported. Quite pretty, but rotten. What I hope is I don't hit a nice solid bit of wood and it catches the drill. That's why I'm going in so slow. Just easing it forward, supporting the wood with my hand, You can see how dry and dusty the wood is. That's what we're getting off with a drill bit. Normally you would expect shavings. Get that out of there. Clean it up. Get that back in there. I'm just going to wind this back on us a bit. There. Uh, these are colts. You can't seem to get them anymore. Brilliant falsner bits. They really cut well, hold the edge well. 
Uh, but something happened to Colt, they were a German manufacturer and not been able to get them for probably nearly two years. Expensive. Um, no, this is going to be finished in just a minute. I'm going to drill through here, sand the outside, put a bit of wax on it, job done. We won't bother about cutting the base off of live, but I'll long worth chuck that afterwards and get the base off. I just want this to come down and meet my dome, which shouldn't be too much longer. We're not having a part three. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Let's wind it in. Now normally if I'm using a full star I would have been in and out by now. Um, but because of the way we're mounted. Yeah, they're planet. Planet used to bring in the cults. And uh, my old mate Chris at Planet, he's not been able to get cults now, let's say for nearly two years. Uh, and these extensions are only designed to fit these cult bits there of a cam off centre slightly so they lock up on a cam. He's bought in a uh, Fermag or something now which I've not tried yet and I've not bothered putting them on the site so I will try them but when you find something that works, you stick to it, don't you, you know? So I've got a whole set of these cults. Excellent things. Let me just stop that there. There you see, look, it's just dust and rubbish. Oh, thank you. Now, back into here. Find that into there. And now we just. I shouldn't think we've got to go too much further. We've got to go into the extension. Let's do that quickly. If I put a bigger dome on the inside, that would have been better. Um, I just dropped the extension in my pocket. No, oh, put it there. So, extension into there. Yeah, we can't have much more to go. Put that onto there. Spanner and lock it off. Lock it off. Lock that down there. Slide that back into there. Turn it back on. Clear the shavings by back winding. I don't want it binding up. Back in. Stop that there. Bring that back out. Right. Last one, I reckon. There we go, 
we're through now. I could hear the change of tone of the cut, so I knew I'd be about there. So I'll stop that and just slide that out. Get rid of that. Drop that up there. We'll get our live centre back. Because that will fit into that hole and give us a bit of support. Now I've just got to tidy that top over. So let me just bring that into here. Now this is a very, very fine cut because we're on tape. A little bit more speed. lightest to touches here because we're just holding on a bit of tape a little chamfer into there be nice lovely turn that off bring that up lock that off get rid of this tape Bit like unwrapping a Christmas present, isn't it? I'm not getting any Christmas presents this year. Oh, I'm not. I'm not getting any Christmas presents this year, Mrs. Oliver told me. Because we're in lockdown, she can't go shopping. So Santa's not coming to our house. Sad. No Santa. I don't know what I'm going to do. Bet Santa comes for Joe. Right, people, we're in slight overrun again. I would like us to put a bit of sandpaper on this, a bit of wax, so you can see it finished, and I can turn the spigot off afterwards. So I'm going to do this really quickly. <coughs> it's uh, turned quite smoothly so I should be able to start with a bit of 180 get that out of the way turn that on into here follow me shape round go mad just a bit more speed New Zealand I'm from the uh, east end of London so oh, it's uh, a London accent I'm not Kentish born like Karen. Kentish born and bred, further eye, middle of the head, all that sort of stuff. That'll do for that one. Check that out. Check it out. Yeah, that looks alright. That'll take a quick coat as Ubery watch name. So we get the Ubery watch name. Uh, get the paper towel. Give it a splodge of cut and polish. Uh, yeah, I was born in Bethnal Green. Um, and my mum and dad moved to uh, Walthamstow where I grew up until I was about 23 when I moved out. Uh, I lived not far, a few miles from the Spurs ground so unfortunately I became a Spurs fan and suffered the woes 
Got the Tottenham Hotspur. Never mind. Oof, dropped me paper towel. Picked up me paper towel. Right, let's get this a work in. It's cut and polish. Chestnut product stuff. As I said earlier, I use Yorkshire grit as well for an instant finish. Um, my tin of grit run out, and so I thought I'd try to cut and polish. And uh, for a quick finish, this actually starts putting a shine on straight away, which I quite like. Now, yeah, that'll do. A bit of wax. Speedy, speedy. Hurry up, hurry up. Oh. I've just done something really, really, really stupid. Really stupid. Picked up the wrong thing of wax. <laughs> Let's put this on over here. Oh. Give it another coat. Less haste, more paste, as they say. I thought myself that it didn't sound like it was cutting well. Never mind. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Okay, let's try again. Cut and polish. Take two. That's better. It sounds like it's cutting. It's got an abrasive grit in it. And you can hear it working in and you can see the dust come off in the paper towel. That's it. And then it starts to shine. Give me that tool rest out of my way. Okay. Alright. Now. Let's drop that on the floor, stop that. Quick one of these, nearly with you. Open this up. Bit of this. Well, this was a definite wood turning demonstration, not a splash of colour anywhere. I'll change that next week. We'll go back to splash it on all over. Proper splash. Get that into there. Get that buff. No, cut and polish you put straight onto the wood. You don't need to use sanding sealer with it. You are supposed to put it on and wait a minute or two. It's like the microcrystalline wax. You're supposed to put that on and let wait a bit for that as well. But I think this little project has taken long enough. Okay, so let me get that away, that away. Now what I sh will do is I'll just ease this joint a little bit. But I'll do that later and that oh, all that will need is just a little bit of sandpaper on it to ease that off. Let's take that out of the chuck. I can reverse mount this in a bit but now we've got a little a chazine the foot will come off so it will just stand and actually this bit of awful looking piece of um, 
transported elm actually looks quite effective on that. Now, it's nice and shiny. I'll turn the bottom off. Just a little bit of sandpaper. Just take a, a tad off of that so it pulls apart easier. Uh, and there's a little tagine that way. Yeah. There we go. Well, that weren't bad for two weeks' work, was it? Yeah, never mind. Hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I'll finish it off and then put a picture up, all that sort of stuff. We got there. Thanks, Paul. Thanks very much. Cheers, Dave. Thanks, Mark. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, Duncan. Thanks, Brian. Glad you like it. Took a while. We got there. Thanks, Robert. Steve, glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, John. Yeah, it's turned out all right. It does look quite smart. I quite like it. So, Cheers, Doug. Cheers, Pete. Oh, Pat Carroll, thank you very much. I did say to him earlier, Pat, if you weren't here, you was right, I was wrong. I didn't do the banjo up on the um, McNaughton. We will do a little demo on using one of them. Badly. <laughs> oh, people, you're going too quick. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Elena. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Adrian, that's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. Um, thanks, Colin. Glad you enjoyed it. Cheers, Andrew. Hope you enjoyed yourself. John, that's kind of you. Thank you very much. Oh, Lady H, very kind of you. Thank you very much. Very nice of you. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Steve. Cheers, Michael Stratton. Thanks, Miss T. Uh, looking forward to seeing the snowman. Cheers, Stuart. Go and make your workshop dirty, Lady H. Hey, keep it that way. Thanks, would you? Yeah, Ian Blair, I would just quick one. Thank you for all your advice on Thursday on the street. Can't wait to get my hands in. Thanks again. Cheers, Ian. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you will love it. Thanks, Clive. Thanks, Martin. Mole Valley, thank you. Leroy, enjoyed it. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all that sort of stuff. All helps the channel. Uh, thank you all for your support. Do appreciate everybody turning up on a Saturday morning um, and watching. Thanks, Hans. Thanks, Simon. Thanks, Malcolm. Cheers, Derek. Bye. So, you've got to go off, enjoy your Saturday, or get into your workshops and see what you can create. You need to make some Christmas presents, most of you, I should think. Um, I've got to make some snowmen, I know that. I might do them as a demo. <laughs> Cheers, Nigel. Yeah, look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, the, the sporting woods always do add something, you know, so yeah, it's quite a nice sort of contrast in woods. I'll uh, give it another coat of wax and stuff, and yeah, good. See you, John. Thanks, Steve. Fuck a job. Lovely, jubbly. Thanks, Four Kings. 
Take care all. Yeah. Right. John, yeah, we'll, we'll maybe do a snowman, another one. Cheers, Steve. Stay safe. Ridley, thanks for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Right, everybody. It's over and out. It's nearly 12 o'clock. I think you've got another demo at 12. I've got some tidying up to do and the base off so I can take a picture. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking and all that sort of stuff. I look forward to seeing you again next Saturday at 10. Goodbye.